Something else that I wanted to look at was what problems do our students run into? One of the first things that I've noticed when I am teaching this to my classes is that when you open up Final Cut Pro for the first time, it's an interface overload. There's a lot of buttons that allow you to do the same thing over and over and over again. Now this is what it looks like when you open up a standard project, but if students kind of go a little bit crazy as they're often apt to do, it can eventually kind of degrade into something that looks like this. And what I've done here is I've actually opened up all the windows that are possible and kind of mushed them around. But I've seen things similar to this oftentimes. The good news is both applications have done a lot to try to keep everything within one window. This is the default look for Final Cut Pro 10. And this is actually the most complex you can make it. A lot of these planes slide in and out depending on what you're doing. So this, some of these panes could be replaced with audio monitoring or with color correction, but it pretty much does a very good job of making sure that you can never get overburdened with the amount of panes. This is the default interface for Premiere Pro. Something that they're really proud of with the new CS6 version is they've gotten rid of a lot of the distractions. But with this being an Adobe product, there are a lot, a lot of palettes. Now this is something that I doubt anybody would ever do, but you can see the amount of complexity that you can get into with the Premiere Pro interface. Now one of the things that I would say in its favor is with all of these different palettes, you can really customize your interface to make it really work well for you. You have a little bit more control over it than you would with Final Cut Pro 10. In my opinion though, with our students, I think the simplicity and ease of the interface in Final Cut Pro 10 wins over the amount of control and the amount of customization that's available in Premiere Pro CS6. So I would go with Final Cut Pro 10 on this option. The next problem that students can run into is importing from tape. Now whenever I'm in class, I take an entire day to teach students how to import from tape. Yes, we are eventually going to be running over and hopefully be getting card-based cameras in the near future, but it's going to take a while for us to get rid of all the tape-based cameras. So for the next one or two years, we're still going to be stuck with tape. Now what I've done is I went through and I took a tape and I recorded it with our SD camera and our HD camera in all the different formats. I also put in gaps of tape where there was nothing recorded and I switched to all the different formats throughout. So this is probably a worst case scenario. I then put it into our HD camera and imported it. Now the importing interface with Final Cut Pro 10 is very similar to iMovie. There's a camera, you click on it, and you just hit the import button. Now one of the things that Final Cut Pro 10 has gotten rid of is the ability for you to do logging and capturing. It's just going to capture everything in from the tape. And then it expects you to go in and organize it afterwards. So if you click on the import button right there, it does an excellent job. When it went from DV to HD, it just switched over. It knew exactly what was happening. It stopped importing when the tape was blank, and then it brought things right in afterwards. This is a huge improvement over Final Cut Pro 7. On the other end is Premiere Pro. This is much more similar to what we're used to with the, the ability to log and capture, set your in and out points, and then do a batch capture afterwards that you get with Final Cut Pro 6 and 7. You can also import the entire tape and have it do an automatic scene detection as well. But in my experience, it's only going to import your HD or DV footage. It doesn't import both of them. And something that was really troubling to me, when I went from DV footage to HD, I got this error message that popped up. And even more upsetting was the fact that I could not get rid of this. I clicked on OK and it would pop up again. I did everything in my power. I turned off the camera, I unplugged it, but I could not get rid of this error message. The only way to get rid of it was to force quit out of the application. For students, this is going to be very, very upsetting because Premiere Pro does not autosave your application does not auto save your product so when they open it it's going to look like all the footage that they'd imported previously has was lost or deleted that's not the case just like in Final Cut Pro 6 and 7 you can go to the scratch disk or wherever it's at and you can re-import the footage but it's going to cause some problems for students hands down between these two the option for importing from tape goes straight to Final Cut Pro 10 it is the best choice of the two 
Another one is media offline. We see this all the time, and this is almost always a product of our students' disorganization. Now, if we take a look at what Final Cut Pro 10 offers, it's actually one of the more controversial, but I think a real big benefit for our students. It actually has a database. Now, one of the downsides to this is students are going to be required, each database is going to be done on a by disk. So students are going to be required to have an external hard drive. They're not going to be able to edit off the student work drive as they did before because whoever is the first person to edit off the student work drive has those permissions and all other students trying to use that computer will not be able to edit off of it. So all students are going to be required to have an external hard drive to import their media to. The good thing about this is I've tested USB 2.0 drives and they work perfectly fine so we don't have to worry about the added expense of final of firewire drives this also um, so the really nice thing about this is all of the footage that they've brought in is organized for them and condensed into that database we get rid of any problems we might have where for instance if they put in a CD and drag it drag the music directly off the CD into the timeline, it's expecting to have that CD there all the time, and then when they go in to play it again, the CD's been popped out, it's lost that footage. With the amount of organization I've seen, I'm sure you've seen on some of our students' desktops, the choice that Final Cut Pro 10 has made to organize the footage for our students, I think is going to be great for them and going to be a huge boon. They also allows them to organize and tag their footage, which is something I think more and more people are getting used to through the internet. Once again, going the, in the exact opposite direction is Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is going to bring in anything from anywhere. If you bring in your audio files from a CD, it's assuming that you know that that's what you've done. So it's putting a lot more responsibility on the editor to know and organize the information for themselves. This is a positive if you have really organized students and people who are using a preset pipeline, but for our students who are just learning and honestly a lot of them don't have the greatest organizational skills, this is going to be a problem. One of the downsides to the way that Final Cut Pro 10 works is if you try to organize anything within that database folder structure, it will really upset Final Cut Pro. If you want to delete any footage or if you want to add any footage or additional projects, you need to, in Final Cut Pro 10, do it through Final Cut Pro 10 itself. With that being said, I still think that the, the trade-off for being able to only organize within Final Cut Pro 10 and the fact that you have to have an external hard drive, I think still gives the, the amount of organization that it does for the students and how it collects all the footage into that one place definitely for our students gives Final Cut Pro 10 the edge over Premiere Pro.